So at the outset, uh, I would like to thank Anut sir, Amit sir, uh, the organizing committee of uh, ACP for giving me this wonderful opportunity at the seaside. It's a lovely venue and it's late in the evening, lots of people are busy for tea and coffee. So my talk will be a little different. I'm going to be doing a talk which is going to be uh, no PowerPoint, no classic medical talk, but I'm going to talk about something which we all use, but we don't use, which is a smartphone or a phone that we all have in our pockets and which we use as a walkie-talkie just to make phone calls to friends and relatives and patients in our hospitals. We don't do anything more than that. There's a saying in uh, computer science which says that Microsoft Excel, 80% of people use only 20% of the features. This is not called as a phone, it's called as a smartphone. And trust me, it can replace your entire hospital, it can replace your entire secretary, it can replace your entire clinic, it can replace your entire library of books and journals. You can do so much with your phone, it always amazed me that we spend 80,000 to 1.25 rupees on a phone and we just use it to talk, talk and talk, which you can do in a phone which costs 5,000 rupees. So what is a smartphone? Uh, we conduct workshops on this and we've been doing it for the last five years with Dr. Kulkarni and Apicon. It's a one hour workshop which I'm again taking in January. So I'm going to be very short and sweet with just few apps. I'll be a little outside the medical lingo to make life easy for all of you. So we'll start with certain important topics. As you can see, uh, it's all, I'm handling the entire presentation from my phone, which is wirelessly connected to the laptop. I'm mirroring my phone over here, and I'll be showing you the apps. And I'll, there'll be no PowerPoint, I'll be doing a live demo. So let me start with the first app, which is a QX Calculate. Now this is a very wonderful app. It gives you all the calculators in the entire medical, in the entire human body. And this is something which we use day to day in our day to day lives. So let's, let's, let me show you some few very important uh, calculators here. EGFR is something we all use it in diabetes and many other illnesses. We commonly use multiple formulas are there. We use this Cockroft Gold formula. You generally make the patient spend some 250 rupees to get it done from the lab. It's difficult to get a EGFR done in your own bedside clinic. Very simple. I have a patient which is a male patient. I have his age as 47. I have his uh, weight which is probably 74. I have a serum creatinine which is probably 1.2. This is my EGFR 79.65. Zero money, less than five seconds. You have your uh, EGFR in front of you. You can choose the dosages of your various drugs, anti-diabetics, whatever you want to do. One very simple formula here. You have the MDRD EGFR formula here. You have lots of formulas in the infectious disease formulas. You have cardiology formulas over here for atrial fibrillation. You have the risk scores. You have heart failure scores. You have syncope scores. Okay. You have general medicine formulas here. You have basic calculators here, which is your BMI calculators, lean body weight calculators, weight-based medication dosing, something which we all need very regularly. So choose the patient's weight. Let's say the weight is 74. Dosages, let's say you want to give uh, probably 4 microgram per kilogram body weight. Uh, you want to have the amount probably, uh, let's say, 40 milligram. Volume is around, let's say, 100 cc. You want to give a PID dose. You want to give daily. You can choose what is the right formulation that suits you. So, so it's all there at your bedside, I mean, at your clinic side, very easy to use, very practical. Let's come to this infusion pump, which we need in the ICU. We calculate for dopamine, dopamine, insulin, a lot of noradrenaline, which we use. We generally tell our uh, intensivists and our RMOs to do it, but at times we need to have access to that. So we have a 67-year-old male person over here with a dilution of eight milligram, probably noradrenaline. And I want to give a dose of, uh, probably I want to give a dose of uh, uh, maybe around uh, nine, microgram per kilogram per body weight. So all I have to do is make a phone call and tell the concerned staff in charge of the ICU to keep the pump at 4.1 ml per hour. So you don't sit down with a piece of pen and paper and waste a lot of time calculating. It took me less than two seconds to come with the accurate dose and it's right in front of you. Okay, another practical thing. Let's look at the ESC pocket guidelines over here. The European Society guidelines, you have all the calculators which are required. You have all the guidelines which are required. All the messages are there. Summary cards are there, all the congresses are synoptics over here. If you look at the congresses, you have their live videos, you have their PowerPoints, you have the ESC TVs over here, you can go through each one of them, build up your knowledge, read them, surf through them at your free time, and get updated within no extra cost and no extra effort from your side. Look at the atrial fibrillation, uh, uh, 
look at the pulmonary embolism guideline here. Let me go through this. Uh, let's look at the ventic uh, ventricular arrhythmia guidelines here. You can go through these guidelines. You can see the preamble. You can see the introduction. You can see the acute management of uh, ventricular arrhythmias. It's all over here. All the charts are here. All the scores are here. All the guidelines and all the current flow of literature is here, which you can go through and pick up anything that you want to pick up with all the antiarrhythmics. Choose the scenario, choose the patient profile, and come to conclusions in a very accurate and a nice manner. Without going through multiple books, searching on the net, going through multiple links, downloading it, reading it, you can do it at your convenience even when you're sitting on the back seat of your car. Okay, another very important app which is there for you, which is a guideline app. This is a clinical guideline app which we use very practically, find it very relevant to day-to-day -day use. You get all the uh, different kind of guidelines, as you can see, STEMI, non-ST myocardial infarctions, revascularization scores, DAP score, and these are interactive management issues. Let's look at the indications for this. You can have an interactive session, you can have a static section. You have a static section, you have the flowcharts, you have the guidelines, you can go to the links and go into the details of the guideline. If you're looking at an interactive situation, if the symptom onset is more than 12 hours, you feel there's a totally occluded infarct, are you planning to do a PCI? It's no benefit, it's a class 3 level education. Very, very basic and very down to earth, very relevant clinically and highly evidence based. Okay, now let me walk you through some other things here. Medscape. Again, this is free. All these apps are free. I have not paid a single peso for using any of these apps. Whereas to subscribe to various journals, to go through various uh, literature, you have to pay a subscription. These are totally free of cost for anybody. Neither the apps cost anything, nor those subscriptions over here cost anything. This is something very useful over here. You can see all the drugs which are there. You can go through any drug in the market. Go through the entire profile of the drug. You have the entire pharmacopoeia over here. You can go through the procedures that are relevant for any specialty of medicine, whether it's an ICU setting, whether it's a non-ICU setting, go through any procedure, see the interactive videos and photos and the procedure in detail, and you can revise it whenever you want. You can go through a very beautiful thing called as interaction checkers. This is something which I find very relevant in our day-to-day -day practice. Let's see, we have certain drugs which we're prescribing on our patients, whether it's a diabetic patient, uh, infectious disease patient, uh, uh, anti uh, hypertension patient, uh, let's say I'm treating somebody with tuberculosis and I'm giving him uh, isoniazide. Le let me put isoniazide over here. Okay, I choose isoniazide. Let's say this gentleman has got seizures. I put him on phenytoin sodium. I choose those. I've got one interaction. I also want to treat him for uh, tuberculosis and I also want to treat him for a cough, so I decided to put him on a levofloxacin. I choose those. I got two interactions. What are those interactions? It's shown to you very clearly. What are the drug levels of each drug? How do you monitor? How do you manipulate? What do you do? What you should be careful about? In pregnant women and elderly people, a very useful tool for every patient prevents you from a lot of medical, legal, and potential complications issue. You don't have to sit and ask anybody. You don't have to go through any pharmacopoeia to find it out. When you're free, this, is give, this gives you another beautiful thing in your free time, when you're driving your car or when you are uh, sitting on the back seat. In this app, there's something called as podcasts. So a lot of conferences and seminars that are being held abroad, which are not available to us on a daily basis. There are a lot of discussions, clinical case scenarios, uh, social interactions and medical science. A lot of things are available. You can just play any podcast, update your knowledge, get in touch with your colleagues outside the country and seminars which are being held in different parts of the country and just get familiar with what is going on. So I've, I've just touched over here. I was given 20 minutes. There's a lot of medical literature. Dynamite is another very beautiful app which is by uh, American College of Physicians. It has practically everything. It has got podcasts, it has got uh, uh, calculators, it has got case scenarios, it has got clinical summaries. A lot of things can be learned. And the beauty of all this is you don't need a very higher end broadband connection though 5G is supposed to be walking in very soon by December. But then everything is there on a smartphone and you don't have to have a Samsung or a one, uh, you know, HTC or you don't have to have a OnePlus 50,000, 70,000 phone. These don't consume much of system resources. They can be taken very beautifully in a 10,000 rupees phone. So even your, uh, your nursing staff and even your ground level staff can be given these things to use 
uh, your paramedical staff can be asked to go through these things and it makes life very simple for everybody concerned. Now I'll move a little ahead from this. I will take you a little on paramedical side but which is very relevant to our practice as a doctor, something which is called as medical legal, something which is on the right since I'm in the medical legal committee of AMC in Mumbai and we see a lot of cases, so-called cases which are because of various reasons and we are all facing the brunt of the legality banging into our doors for no fault of us. For minor things like you must be aware so many uh, cases have come in the National Consumer Forum in Delhi for lack of proper consent. So le let's talk of a scenario where you want to put in a central line or there was a very reputed senior intensivist from Hinduja Hospital who was recently taken to task for doing a plural tapping in the ICU for a very fictitious and a very minor uh, word which was omitted in the consent. And he could not prove that the consent was legalized in the eyes of the law. So, so there is, a, there is a big need that we all face about recording our consents, whether it's a video recording or an audio recording. There's a big need that we face about our communication with our patient, which need to be taken care of and which should be acceptable by law. So have you people heard of this when you call up Vodafone or Airtel or something, they say this conversation may be recorded for uh, record keeping purposes and for training purposes. So you feel like you could record. The beauty here is, um, the, the non-beauty part here is, Recording any conversation without the consent of the other party is illegal. Now you can't tell a patient, Ki, look boss, I'm going to do a polycystectomy on you and I'm going to tell you all the complications of polycystectomy and I'm going to record whatever you say, then you tell me whether you're ready to undergo or not, I'm sure nobody will be ready. So how do you go about it in a legal manner, but you do it in a nice manner. So when I'm going to go ahead and do a procedure or when I'm explaining a near death consent or I'm taking a consent for uh, DNR, DNI, and I need it to be put it on paper, and I've done that, and I'll deviate from here, from today's topic, just letting you know one thing, the courts do not accept a pre-printed consent form. A very reputed urology center was in the limelight recently, I won't take any names, and they had to pay a heavy penalty for a pre-printed consent form which was signed, which the National Consumer Forum did not accept. So it is a practice in my hospital, I have a pre-written consent form, I change the name and the condition of the patient, and I change the type of consent depending on the scenario of the patient. And then I make them sign. And I always take a second consent in the native language of the patient. Because there have been cases where they say, we do not understand what was written. So you make the patient sign in the native language, you don't have to know the native language. Like if I don't know Telugu, Google Translator is very much available, a beautiful app which is 95% accurate. Put up your consent on Google Translator, get it in the language of your choice, print it out, take a signature and you're safe. Beyond that, you need an audio consent. It's there on your mobile, you don't use it. A Lot of recorders are there. If yours is a Samsung phone, here is my recorder. Whatever consents I take are all recorded. Oh, I'm sorry. This is kind of one second. Okay. So here it is. All my consent, all my recordings are here. They're all storable as an MP3 file. I can share them on my WhatsApp. I can share them to a Google Drive or a Microsoft Drive. I can share them wherever I want on the cloud and I can store it. Keep it in my PC for permanent reference after labeling it properly. So my consents are there and I'm secure. Now how do you go about the legality of taking to the patient's consent that I'm recording your consent? Now I'll give you an example. Suppose you lose the original agreement papers of your land or your flat. Or there is a property which you had, had a cousin brother or somebody who could claim to a property later but then that person is not available. What the law says is that you have to make a public announcement of what you're doing, right? Now, how do you make that public announcement? The very simple way to make a public announcement as you must have seen in various malls and hotels is this room is under CCTV coverage. This hotel is under electronic coverage. Put up a nice notice in a clinic room. This room is under electronic surveillance. If your patient doesn't see that is his problem, that's not your problem. But then you're legally safe because you have told the person that I'm recording. You have not explicitly told, but you have given enough cues to the person that this is being recorded. Once you record it, you are legally safe. It has helped me, it has helped many of my colleagues, it has helped a lot of our colleagues, because once you produce a voice recording which is not manipulated with software, which the courts can make out through forensic medicine, then that consent is legally acceptable in a court of law. So this can save your skin many times. If you can do an in-camera recording, nothing like it, you need a higher end hardware for that. Again, if you want to do a camera recording, apps are available free of cost on your mobile. You can put your mobile in your coat pocket, you can do a camera recording. Not difficult, right? I'll go beyond that and I'll take on something which we all very commonly use in our day-to-day -day life, which is called WhatsApp. 
I'm sure none of us can survive without a WhatsApp. How does WhatsApp help in our own practice? Of course, we share photos and videos and we share a lot of patient-related information on WhatsApp. There is something called as business WhatsApp. How many of you know what is business WhatsApp and how many of you use a business WhatsApp? Is there anybody in the audience which is using business WhatsApp? So, so you all know what is a business WhatsApp. Business WhatsApp gives you a lot of leverage. Now, my WhatsApp is a business WhatsApp. Now, what is it? As you can see over here, you can see it's my hospital photo. So, it gives me clear-cut advertisement which is legally allowed because a hospital or a clinic can advertise, a doctor cannot advertise. So, my center is getting advertised nicely. Moment you, a person sends me a WhatsApp, he gets this. Something which I do very regularly is this. The moment you send me a message, can I request uh, uh, Amit sir to send me a message right now? Okay, he has sent me a message already, fine. So the moment you send me a message, you get this auto message. So I advertise very beautifully over here. I tell them these are my clinic numbers. This is my emergency number. This is my website number. Thank you for calling, you're welcome. And we will be happy to get back to you. It's an auto message. The moment you ping me, you get this automatically to your inbox and your WhatsApp. A very beautiful way to communicate without wasting your time and energy chit-chatting with a patient or doing it, you can modify the way you want. If you're practicing exclusive diabetes laws, you can modify it to suit certain emergencies and diabetes to be contacted where, what to do in certain hypoglycemic scenarios. Whichever way, there is no end to how much length of a message do you want. There's no end to how much material you want to write. It will shoot off automatically. Another thing, if you go into the settings of business WhatsApp, you get lots of tools here. These are business tools which they have written. You can put a catalog. You can write a nice catalog, you can show whatever you have, what kind of facilities you're giving, what kind of, it's like a mini website. You can advertise as much as you want and all these things will be floated to your patients, to your audience, free of cost, continuously and seamlessly. You don't really have to change your message. You can choose the quick replies, you can choose the away message, you can choose the greeting message. You can link it to Facebook and Instagram and by putting this, you can directly get access. If you link your business WhatsApp to Facebook, whatever messages you put are pushed onto your business Facebook page whenever you want and as many times as you want. So that's the advantage of business WhatsApp. It's free of cost, it's very palatable and it's something which works wonderfully. Even if you don't have a website, a lot of businesses are successfully running on business WhatsApp. So I'll encourage you people to consider this as an option in real life. The only hitch is, once you use your number for business WhatsApp, you cannot convert it back to personal WhatsApp. And you cannot transfer money on business WhatsApp, which you can do on a personal WhatsApp. Another thing which is, which Meta or Facebook has recently, you know, Facebook owns WhatsApp today, has introduced is, now is something this, which is uh, linked, de uh, okay. Now linked devices is something that we, I don't know how many of you use it. You can throw your entire WhatsApp on the computer. So if you have a laptop or your computer, you need not, jump between your uh, mobile and your laptop when you're working on your laptop. Your WhatsApp will run live on your laptop or your PC. You can type over there, you can put attachments over there, you can forward messages from there, you can reply over there. The way you work on your mobile will be workable on a laptop and it syncs automatically. And previously they had to be on the same Wi-Fi network to run, today that's not the case. The third advantage of a business WhatsApp, which is not there with a normal WhatsApp is, one business WhatsApp account can run on four laptops simultaneously. So you, your wife, and probably your colleague can do it at the same time, provided you want your wife to have access to your WhatsApp phone. That's a different scenario. So that's up to you. So, so that's another advantage of a business WhatsApp. Uh, just as we have Zoom, you send a Zoom link, and you can sort of have a three to four people conversing together in a room. Today, you can send a WhatsApp link to three, four people, and you can have a same digital kind of an experience like a Google Meet or a Zoom Meet on a WhatsApp feed, which is much more easier and down to earth and user friendly. Another app that I want to take you to, and I'll just take two more things and I'll stop over here. For people, uh, amongst us, some, some of us are traveling very heavily, attending various conferences and going as a faculty. This is a very beautiful app that I've come across, which is not a medical app, it will be very useful to you guys. This is called Flight Radar 24, okay? Before your plane actually lands, this app will tell you, before you get an official announcement from the airline or the service provider, this app will tell you if the plane has landed or not. So now I'm showing you the map of Mumbai. I'm showing you the map of Mumbai. This is a live thing because it pulls in from the air control. It's a legal thing, it pulls in from all the air control traffics, ATCs across the world. 
So right now in front of Mumbai, these are the flights which are spread over Mumbai. Let's pick up this flight. Uh, okay. I need a good internet over here. Unfortunately, the net is slow, so I'm not getting all these things need a huge bandwidth to get the data here. So it's showing NA versus NA because I'm not getting a good net. It tells you from which, where the flight is originated, where it is going, what is the current speed, what is the altitude. As you can see, it's 1301, 1390. It's showing just five more minutes. It's showing you the actual altitude and the tracking sign and the angle and what is the ground speed and when it will land and what is the latitude and longitude. Believe me, the moment flight touches the ground, this is the first step to tell you before Air India or San, uh, Vistara or anybody announces it to you. So very useful for your spouses, at least you can track what you're doing exactly in the air, right? Very useful for business people. Uh, a very important thing which I wanted to tell you is two things, which is called backup. What are very important for is SMS backup, WhatsApp backup, and our contacts backup. We need this because if you destroy your phone or you change your phone, this is a data that you can't live without. Don't depend on the SMS app which is available on your phone which is inbuilt in any Android. Very useless app. This is a very beautiful app that I use. It's made by Microsoft. It's called SMS app by Microsoft. It classifies all your apps, uh, SMSs into messages. It classifies all your bills which are going to come from electricity and telephone and petrol or whatever SMSs you get as reminders. All your banks, SMSs that you get will be classified into finances and you cannot enter them unless you put in your password. So they are private to you. And these are real life offers from Zomato, Swiggy and all that and they actually work. Okay. So this is free of cost and what is the beauty of this app is you can take a backup. You don't have to waste your time. It backs up to your Google Drive at one hourly interval or daily interval or whichever way you want. All your SMSs are preserved indefinitely. Just moves into your next mobile when you want. Uh, only one thing I'll show you here is how do you back up your WhatsApp. A lot of people ask me, the moment I switch on my phone, I lose a lot of pictures and videos and messages. You don't want to lose all that. A very beautiful way to back up your WhatsApp is this. Very simple. Go into your uh, explorer of your phone. Go into your uh, this thing, your phone uh, operating system. Go into a uh, Android folder. Inside the Android folder, you have a media folder. Inside the media folder, you have this... Uh, business WhatsApp and I have got both business. got two SIM cards over here. So this is the .com.whatsapp W4B and this is the com.whatsapp. Just take this entire folder, push it into your PC or your memory card, put it back in the new phone and then install WhatsApp. Everything right from 1920 or 1930 since you are running your WhatsApp will come to your phone. Sir, kindly conclude sir, we are getting late. Thank you very much. Like I said, we take workshop is done for two hours so I just touched upon it and thank you for giving me this opportunity.